Okay, Luna. I know you hate the geese. I know, it's such a pain, but you gotta overcome these fears. 12 years ago when we bought our miniature farm, one of the first animals we bought was our sweet Luna. Over the years we've had her, she's been such a character and it has given us as many laughs as she has milk. Now that she's retired though, she gets to rest in the pasture, flirt with the boys, and live out her life as the herd queen. Unfortunately, last year we had a coyote problem and while Luna bravely stood up to them, we knew we needed something to alert us to any future coyotes. So we brought in a pair of geese to keep a watchful eye on the farm. The only problem is while Luna and the geese seem to get along at first, now they're starting to bully her. It makes me sad though, <laughs> she doesn't get to eat. Don't worry though, the boys have a solution and today we're gonna see if it works. And then just say, <laughs> I don't know. Lydia, you need, we need one person there. Go over, go over there now. Okay. So we've tried in the past to feed the geese way over on the, on the other side of the pasture, but they don't like that. They are so used to this feeding area. So we're hoping that a little bit of separation and that we fed them in a separate area, hopefully they'll eat that. Get them, go. <laughs> You guys are good goose cats. Wings is, wings is. <laughs> oh. Okay, Luna. I know you hate the geese. I know it's such a pain, but you gotta overcome these fears if you wanna be the queen of the herd. All right, do it. You're okay. Okay, so we've got the goats eating over here. And we're gonna see if we can get the geese to eat over here, not over there. Okay. Oh. Be nice to Luna. Just eat over there. Kevin, go over there and make them make them see the food. Oh. I don't know. These geese are getting pretty protective. <laughs> Luna's like the only one afraid of them. <laughs> Luna, it's okay. The only good thing is Luna's a bully and she eats all the best hay. She like. Oh, she the so best you're thinking it's alcohol. better if she gets pushed away a little bit? Because none of the other goats are affected at all. So I don't know. I, I'm thinking that we should just keep the geese in their own pen or build them their own pen. What do you think? I think something like that. It makes me sad though. <laughs> she doesn't get to eat. Oh, she eats. Are you sure? Okay, I think the plan is geese gotta have their own pen. They still do great because they are a good alarm for the coyotes that come around here, so we can hear them in the middle of the night. They'll squawk really loud. But I don't know if they should have access to the whole pasture. <laughs> okay, I'll come up. <laughs> Opposite of what we planned. Yeah, there we go. We've got the geese on the. Oh my gosh. Stop it. And then all the goats are over there. Finally, eating them. Yeah, but like Luna's still afraid. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Luna will only get 15 feet. Yeah. I don't know what face freaks down her out. A freaking coyote. She did face right down a coyote. Alleyway. Yeah, she just faced it down. She's scared of these little geese. I think they're getting really protective, which is good but not around the goats, yeah. you know? Hopefully, this year, they will hatch out some eggs for us. Last year, it was a bit of a disaster. They ended up eating all of the eggs that they hatched, but hopefully this year will be much better. <laughs> Lydia, they're coming around. Right. I don't know what oh. to do. Just get them in this gate, Lydia. Come on, don't let him out. Okay, I'll come, I'll come this way. Okay. Yeah, 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 that's good. Slowly. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. Slowly. No! Oh no, 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 no. They're kind of smart. They're kind of smart? Slowly, slowly. All right, all right. We did it. We did it. We are smart. We're so good. All right, we solved the, the goose versus Luna. 
the geese. No, I have to say it again. Okay, we, the goosen. Goosen. <laughs> okay, we solved the geese versus Luna problem. So I guess apparently Luna is, she's losing it a little bit. She's, she's not as dominant as she used to be, but she's still the queen. We're gonna we're gonna make sure that she's still the queen, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We'll see. We always think we have a good idea, and then it doesn't work. <laughs> and we may have to build. We actually do have to build a bigger pen because <laughs> he's not gonna because we built this initially so that they could just hatch out their babies in it. Uh, but now, now they, they need a full time place. They need a bigger place. Mm. All right, you guys have to help me convince Kevin because he's not gonna want to move this fence that we just built but I think it would be nice to give them a little bit of a bigger area. It would even be cool to give them like a little fountain or something since they love the water. I don't know if I can convince Kevin though, so I'm gonna need some help. He checks the comments, so you'll have to say something in the comments. This portion of the video is sponsored by HelloFresh. We've been utilizing HelloFresh in our meal plans for the last couple years, and the reason is because even though we can grow a lot of food here ourselves on the farm, it really helps us stay on track with our goals, especially during really busy nights. Our kids are involved in so many different activities at the end of their high school years, so it really helps to have all the ingredients for a dinner waiting for us in the fridge. Their simple recipes are fresh and they're pre-portioned, so it makes putting dinner on the table so much easier, and we don't have to make an extra trip to the grocery store. The meals are really delicious and fresh because they get from the farm to your doorstep within a week. And a good tip is you can increase your HelloFresh box servings so that you can easily use those as leftovers for lunches. Having everything pre-portioned makes dinner on the table go a lot faster and it also means there's less prep and less wasted food. Just having at least one meal a week that's waiting for us in the fridge makes a big difference and helping us stick to our goals of trying to eat healthier and trying to make sure that we don't go out to eat a lot. So if you'd really like to stick to some meal plans or if you'd just like to get better at cooking, go ahead and try HelloFresh. Go to HelloFresh.com and use code WEEDEM16 for up to 16 free meals and three surprise gifts. Okay, today is milk testing day. We're milk testing our goats so that we can see how they compare and hopefully they meet their breed standards so that they earn their milking star, which is a really important thing in the goat world. All right. How's everybody doing? I know. You wanna get out? Well, we're gonna start with Hazel. They always act like they don't know what to do. They never want to use the ramp either. I used to think milk testing was just for people who wanted a cool award for their goat, but I've since learned it's actually really good data to have back so that you can really establish who has the best milking lines. Every goat has its good qualities and bad qualities. There's no such thing as a perfect goat, well, except for Luna, of course. So milk testing is just one way to see if your goat has a strength in a certain area. Some goats have a lot more butter fat, some goats have more protein, and the best ones are the goats that have a good amount of volume. Hazel sort of fell into our laps this year. She was my friend's goat who had decided to move away from their farm. And while initially we thought it was just for a short period of time, now we know that Hazel's here to stay. So we're gonna put her in all the same programs as the other goats here and see how she performs. She's the easiest milker. She just sits here, doesn't make a fuss at all. Oh my gosh. How's Hazel doing with milk testing? She did really good her first couple times. I mean, she's kind of a goat that goes down though when she's in heat. So we have to try to plan the milk testing like around that, but. Her milk volume is pretty low right now. So I think that's due to her being in heat. Hopefully we can get that up later on throughout the year. We also take a sample of the milk so we can test the somatic cell count, which will help tell us if there's any underlying mastitis infections. All right. Have a good day, we'll see you tonight. All right, who's next, Tatum or Fern? I say we do Tatum, come on Tatum. She's gotten better, but oh my goodness. 
She is so dramatic. The first timers always are though. Yeah. I'm sure I'm sure she'll settle down. But look at that beautiful udder. She's gonna move her legs so we can't see it, but that's not bad at all. Yeah. Tatum is such a sweetie. I mean, she really is so new to this world of bean milk and she's so patient. I was a little nervous about how her udder was gonna turn out since Fern, her half sisters, didn't turn out exactly like I had hoped. But this just shows how different sisters are. Tatum has perfect teats and a pretty nice tight udder. So in this first year of milk testing her, we're just trying to see how she does initially. She may earn her milking star or she may have to earn it maybe next year. But overall, I'm really happy with Tatum in this first year and I'm hoping she'll get more comfortable on the stand and just get better year after year. A lot of first timers are actually pretty bad on the stand. So I think I got pretty lucky with Tatum here. Um, she's just, you know, She's just new, so she's a little bit scared. You ate some treats for a little bit. All right, let's see how Tatum did. Almost as much as Hazel, wow. Fern is so good, she walks so good. Goats hit their full maturity at three years old, so Fern's right about there. And so her udder kind of reflects that. So Tatum will get better as the years go on. In case you're wondering, we measure milk by volume because there's a lot of foam when we milk out a goat. And instead of waiting to let that settle down and then measuring by cups, instead we just measure by volume or pounds. Oh man, I love almost everything about Fern. She has quite an udder. <laughs> it makes it a little bit tricky to milk, but we've got our little bucket and we'll get it done. The best feature about Fern is how wide she is. That really helps set the stage for her to have a nice, big, capacious udder. So it's really, truly one of her best features. And her milk volume definitely shows that. We're still pretty early in the year, and so the goats will continue to produce more milk as we keep going here. But everybody's doing great, and hopefully by the end of the year, they'll have all earned their milking stars. Sometimes life goes easy, sometimes life goes doo 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 Sometimes minds go crazy, sometimes minds go doo 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 He is the worst, Ethan. He is jumps he? on your leg constantly. He's oh. the little biter. Is he? Naughty. He's gonna be like her. Mm -hmm. Aw, all my kids are on the mountain. <laughs> oh, you are so sweet, little Miss Rose. She looks like a rose. She does look like a rose. She's very proper. Oh, Tatum needs love too. Yup. She's getting bigger. Yep. She's looking more and more like Tilly. And she has a good, good little udder. She rarely lets me look at it. I mean, that's that's her udder for being drinked out of, you know. Yeah. Is that my, did I say that right? Drunk. Drunken. <laughs> Drink the drunken milk udder. Oh, hold on. We got to give little Emmett some love. He's cute too. I like him. Yeah. He reminds me of Wally. He does. Okay, let's go look, look at this little face. Look at it at the feeder. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Can we come in? You've been eating straw. Little Raven just loves to run up to me. She does. <laughs> yeah. She's so cute. And if I squat down like this, she'll put her little face on my face. I come over here. See? Hello. Kelly. Tilly, you are so funny. She acts all interested and then she just like... Yeah, she's very curious. What? She comes over for her scratches. She usually what? does. She's so curious. She is. She, like, she goes away. Yeah, she, she's very funny. Oh, you're weird. You're like a cat. You don't like to be touched. 
She likes her head scratched the most. Tilly wants scratches because she keeps like. Okay, I'll mm -hmm. give Tilly the scratches. Come here, Tilly. You get scratches too, even though you're old lady. He's getting lighter. He is. Okay, we decided to put Fern and Tatum here in this pen so that we could bring Tilly and her babies out to play with the other babies for just a little bit. Yeah, you have to hang out in here with random chicken, okay? Sorry. Okay, come out and play. They're like so ready to come out. So fun, a new area. Come on. She looks at us, why she look at us? Come on. <laughs> She's so funny. Look, you have brothers and sisters. <laughs> oh, Quill's gonna try to show her who's boss. Oh, the hair is standing up on it. <laughs> They're wondering where Mama is. She's over here fighting Quill. Gotta meet your siblings. Who is that? That's your new best friend. She's so pretty. Look how pretty she is. <laughs> Come on. Getting used to this area. Yeah. You stay close to mom and drink her milk. He's so nice looking too. Yeah. Look at him. <laughs> Come on, that's the first mountain. <laughs> Look at how beautiful he is. Going potty? <laughs> okay, we are ready for our pizza night. We've got everything out and we're ready to go. This is my favorite pizza dough recipe now. <laughs> I'm not gonna make anything different because every single time it's turned out perfectly. I think the key is to let it rise for two days in the fridge because it's amazing. Well, that's just for my pizza. Oh, that's disgusting. <laughs> some people don't like pineapple, some people don't like figs. No fruit on the pizza. All this the kids are gonna show us how they make pizza. Go, Step, step one, grab one. Don't grab the little one, that one's gonna be for dessert stuff. So. That one's for dessert. Okay, okay, okay. And you take it, and you only put one side <laughs> in the flour. Good job. Hey, pick it up. You need to put some on your thing. Lift it up. There you go. Okay, and then, instead of pushing it down like that, you let it hang to stretch it out. Nice, Ethan. You're so good at this. Just start in the center and then push it out. That, that works the best. Look at my little pizza makers right here. Yeah, You're works, so good. Works. You are so good. Welcome to our pizza night. Our pizza. We've got all our pizzas made. And we've got Kevin here to check the temperature. Is it good? What is it? I can't see it on here. Yes, it's about 700. It's 700, yeah. You can't see it on the camera. Perfect. Nice. You gotta be able to vibrate your hand. <laughs> to slide it off. There's your pizza. It's me super hot. Yeah, you don't have to eat it right now. I was just gonna show it. Show that crust, Liddy. Oh my gosh, that's perfect. I decided to try some cinnamon bread. So I took some of the pizza dough, I put butter, 
sugar and cinnamon, and we're gonna see if we can make some cool breadstick things. Thanks for watching the video today, guys. If you wanna watch the video where Luna defended the herd from the coyote, click right here.